Welcome back. In this video, we are going to talk about how to write for four voices, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, using triads and seventh chords, and how to prioritize the parts of the chord, say the root, the third, the fifth, or the seventh. Okay. So starting off, let's take a look at triads. Okay, so we have many different types of triads. We have a major triad, a minor triad, a diminished triad, and an augmented triad. With seven chords, we have the major seven, we have the major minor seven, the minor seven, the half diminished seven, and the diminished seven chords. And each of these, we have root third fifth for the triads and root third fifth sevens for the seventh chords. What we're going to do is we're going to figure out the minimum number of notes necessary um, to identify each of these. Okay, so for each of these, guess what? You're going to need the root. Because without the root, well, we don't know what the, the chord is, what the, you know, the root of the chord is. So that's absolutely necessary. It's always the most important. Okay, so we always need a root. The question is, what's the next most important note for each of these respectively? Well, if we take a look at the major triad, we're going to need the third, right? Because the third tells us whether it's major or minor. Same with the minor triad. We're going to need the third. That's next most important. However, with the diminished and the augmented, we actually only need the fifth. Let me show you why. So, if I have a third, a major third, we don't know if it's diminished or augmented because we don't have the fifth to tell us. In order to be augmented, we have to raise the fifth a half step higher to be diminished. We need to lower the fifth a half step to be diminished. So actually, the fifth of the chord is necessary for diminished and augmented. So with just two notes, you can, you can basically um, notate triads, either using the root in the third or the root in the fifth. Let me prove it to you. I'm playing two notes. Does that sound like a C major triad? Yes, it does. Two notes. Does that sound like C minor? Yes, it does. How about this? Okay, does this sound like diminished? Yes, it does. How about this? Does it sound augmented? Yes, it does. Okay, so this doesn't mean that you're going to just omit the other note. This just means that it's not quite as important. So the fifth is optional in major and minor triads, and the third is optional in diminished and augmented triads. Dealing with seventh chords, well, this should be pretty self-explanatory. The next most important note on all of these is actually, you guessed it, the seventh. Because without the seventh, it's not a seventh chord at all. So we must have the seventh. The question is, do we need another note? All right, so let's figure this out. For the major seventh, it's the only seventh chord with a major seventh interval. So actually, that's the only one that's required. Okay, so for this one, both the fifth and the third are optional. Already implies a major seventh sound. For the um, dominant 7 and minor 7, they both share a minor 7. So what's the next most important note here? If you, if you said 3rd, you are correct. Because the 3rd is going to tell us whether it's major or minor. So for example, I have my root and my minor 7. If I have a major 3rd, now it sounds like a dominant 7th. If I have a minor 3rd, it sounds like a minor 7th. So in this case, the fifth is optional. Okay. Now, when you're dealing with a half diminished seventh, you also have a minor seventh. In this case, it's actually going to be the fifth that is necessary here. Okay, because if you have, say, C and a B flat, a minor seventh, a lowered fifth, 
is going to give you the half diminished sound, sound even without the minor third. So the third is optional here. And last but not least, fully diminished. Okay, fully diminished. This one here, they're equally important. Now, an argument could be made that you don't need either, but it's pretty, it's pretty rare that, um, that you would not need at least one of them. Okay? But they're about equal. You don't need them both, just one or the other. And you can also have all of the notes. So I'm just showing you the minimum notes required to create a sound. This doesn't mean that you can't have all the notes. It just means that you don't have to, right? So this is going to be very important later on when we're looking into part writing and voice leading, okay? Because you're going to run into situations where you're like, man, I can't really get to the fifth so easily. Do I really need it? And if you don't, well, guess what? You can just omit it, okay? So anyways, this is super helpful. Um, I think this is a piece of information that very, very few musicians ever think about. So, um, you know, hopefully this helps you. Let's try to apply this a little bit. Okay, so, of course, I know this, you know, but assuming you don't, you might need to refer to that some. Let's take a look here. I'm going to draw my grand staff. We're going to be writing in SATB form, what we call SATB form. Okay, so S A T B soprano, alto, tenor, bass, four voices. Later on, we'll also be doing compositions in three voices, not just four voices. We need a key signature. I'll just use C major for now, and let's do a one chord. Okay, a one chord. So we know the notes for the one chord are C, E, and G. And now I just need to space my voices in such a way that it kind of makes sense. So I'll just do C as my bass. Okay? I wouldn't want to do my C down here. That's really, really low for the bass. And I wouldn't want to do it up here. Even though that's within the bass registration, if I place the bass that high, that's going to squeeze all my voices up here <clears throat> where everything is really uncomfortable. I don't have that much freedom to move. So again, when you're part writing, especially in the beginning, you want to put things with enough space kind of in a comfortable range so that your job is a lot easier, so you have some options. So I'm just put the C down here. Now, we talked about having a lot of space between the bass and the tenor. In this registration, you can have a fourth, a fifth, or a larger. So um, let's say that I decide to do a fifth. Perfect. Okay. Then my alto can be this E, because I need the third, right? And soprano can be the root. So in this case, I have all three notes of the triad represented here. Okay, so when you're writing in four parts, one thing to consider is the distance between the voices. Okay? And there is just a general rule to follow. With the top three voices, okay, adjacent voices should be no greater than an octave apart. So that means soprano and alto should never exceed an octave means that alto and tenor should never exceed an octave, okay? However, tenor and bass, they can exceed an octave all day long. Now, the truth of the matter is, if, you're, if you have an octave of distance between soprano and alto or alto and tenor, you're probably not writing this well anyways. So in my opinion, you should be within an octave, say a seventh or less or a sixth or less. And generally speaking, it's going to be a sixth or less. Okay. In this case, G to E is a sixth, so I'm good there. E to C is a sixth, so I'm good there. And I have a fifth between my tenor and the bass. It sounds like this. That sounds nice. Okay. Let's do another chord. Let's do, um, let's do a five, six, five. Five six five. So for the five six five here, I'm dealing with a G seven chord over B because it's first inversion, right? So that means my bass note has to be a B. Has to be a B. Which part of the chord is that? 
let's, let's draw our notes. Root third, fifth, and seventh. So we have our third. Check. Great. We also need our root, though, and we also need our seventh. Those are necessary. We don't have to have the fifth, but we need to have our root in the seventh in order for this to sound like a seventh chord, based on this chart we kind of formed earlier. Okay? So that means I need a G. All right, great. So we need to place it somewhere. Well, I think this would work right here, right? For the tenor voice, we could put the G there. That makes sense. That's a sixth apart. That works. I need my seventh. By the way, so let's go ahead and do our stemming here, just to make it even clearer. Bass stem down, alto stem down, tenor and soprano stem up. I need my seventh. Okay, where, where am I going to put my seventh? Well, let's put the seventh and soprano here. And what does that mean? It means I have the alto voice, and the alto voice, well, since I have an extra voice, it could be the D. And there we have it. I have notated this in SCTB form. And that's what the 565 five sounds like. That's what it might sound like if we were resolving. Okay. I even went from my previous chord here. Okay. Let's say, for example, what I just did. I went back to a one chord. So my bass voice went back to a C, my tenor stayed on the G, my soprano went down to the E, and my alto went down to the C. And each of these voices, we're not learning this today, each of these voices is traveling. Okay, certain motions. The alto is descending by step, the tenor is staying the same, and the bass drops a half step and rises a half step. Point is, all the voices are moving somewhat linearly and smoothly, which makes means that each voice is going to be singable. And they're going to also sound good together. Okay. All right, so now that we understand this, um, on the next video, we're going to do some practice from the in-class assignments to look into this a bit further. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you in the next video.